What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another twin motion video for you. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about one of the other big features that got added in the newest release of twin motion. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So if you remember last week, twin motion rolled out a new update that has a couple different features included in it that weren't included in the previous version. So the first, the first thing that they included was a new one-click synchronization link between SketchUp and Twin Motion just by clicking a button inside of SketchUp. So I did a video talking about that feature in detail that I've linked to in the notes down below, but I figured I would go ahead and use that feature in order to take this SketchUp model and move it over into Twin Motion, and then we can talk about the other new feature which they added, which is the new grass pack or the new grass materials. And so before we get started, this week 3D warehouse model um, is the Villa Simple by SZ Kristoff. So if you want to follow along with this model, you can find this on the warehouse and then send this over. And I have gone through and I've done one thing, which is I've taken the ground planes. Um, so everything having to do with the ground and I've put them in a group, that's just going to make everything a little bit easier when we get them over into twin motion. So for the sake of speed, what I've done is I've just left this collapsed by material. Um, so that means that when we take this over into twin motion um, in the, uh, the model organization on the right hand side is going to be my mate by material rather than by the groups that are in here just because I don't want to go back through and reorganize all of these different groups because there's a lot of them in here. So we're going to go ahead and we've got these settings all set up and so now what we can do is we can click on the button for C in Twin Motion. So the first thing that's going to do if you have Twin Motion open is it's going to ask if you want to bring this into an existing project or a new project. We're going to go ahead and bring it into a new project. So we're just going to click OK and that's going to bring our model Model into twin motion. And so you can see how it's really fast bringing this into twin motion. So um, it didn't take a whole lot of time. This is a 45 megabyte file, so it's not a tiny file inside of SketchUp either. So that comes in pretty quickly. And so probably the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and delete out my starting ground, and then I'm gonna go find a landscape um, or a landscape ground in the vegetation and landscape under landscapes. And we're just gonna drag, we're just gonna drag the flat landscape into our rendering. So that's just gonna give us kind of a, kind of something to work on here or work with um, around our building. And so the first thing I wanna take a look at is within this new update, what they've done is they've reorganized the whole grass um, system or they've reorganized all the materials inside of here for the different kinds of grasses. So if you remember the way this looked before is I think it had like six different kinds of grass in here and so you can see how these all look completely different. You can see how they've reorganized all of these up here into lawn and lawn grass and um, they've also added these borders and so the borders are probably one of the bigger new features that are in here. We can take a look at those in a minute. So the first thing I want to do is just take a look at these different kinds of grass and so probably the easiest way to do that is just to go into my vegetation settings down below and we'll go ahead and we'll just paint some of this grass in. So we'll go ahead and paint this lawn one in and we'll just paint like a circle of the lawn one. And so you can see how this gives you kind of a short, like well manicured grass. And then the longer grass obviously is gonna give you something a little bit longer than that. So we can select that and drop that in here. And you can see how that's gonna be a lot longer than the shorter, more manicured grass that's in here. And the cool thing about these longer grasses is they move with the wind, so they're animated. So, um, you know, all of these long, all of these long grasses, I mean, they're just going to be kind of the same length and just kind of have a different color more than anything else, I believe. So if we take a look at this one, um, it's a little more wild than this grass over here. And then we've got, also got options in here for dry grass that wasn't in here before. So that's kind of more of a drier, less uh, green looking grass. And then we've also got some different clovers and dandelions and weeds that were added that weren't in here before as well. So you can take those and you can kind of intersperse them with, whoops. So you can take those clovers and you can kind of intersperse them with the grass 
over here. So you can see how when I drop those in, those are just kind of sitting underneath the grass right here. And it looks fairly realistic in the way that they kind of layer together. So if we were to drop them over here, this is what the clovers would look like. So I, I think this is really good for creating more of a wildland grass kind of look. So um, you're probably not going to add too many clovers and weeds if you're doing like a lawn, but having the ability to add those, especially when you're dealing with something like um, especially when you're dealing with something like these longer grasses is a really nice option to have. You can see how these weeds get dropped in here and you can't really see them under the long, the long grass um, because it's longer. So, but it does give you the option. This really lets you, um, you can see how these weeds are going to be a little bit taller and you could drop those inside of your grass as well. And it just creates this really realistic look the way that they kind of tile in together with the grass right here. So all of those are new and they're really easy to use. You could also bring in like these taller grasses in here to really create kind of a realistic, um, kind of a realistic wildland setting. But what I want to do is I want to focus just a little bit on this border grass for a second because the border grass is something new that wasn't in there before and I, I don't want to say it 100% solves the problem of of applying the grass along edges but it really helps and so the first thing is one of the easiest things to do in order to apply this grass is we're gonna come in here and we're gonna select our vegetation so I'm just going to select by control clicking and I'm gonna select this vegetation grass artificial I'm gonna hold the control key and I'm gonna select this other one as well so basically what we've done inside of our lawn is we've come in here and we've selected these and I want to go ahead and I want to right click on this. I'm going to click on the button for isolate or exit isolate. And so this is probably the best way to apply the grass inside of twin motion right now is just to isolate these faces that you want to apply the grass to instead of uh, trying to get in here with a fine brush and kind of like just get this along these lines or just get them inside the lines here. What you can do instead is you can just isolate what you want to paint along. And if you remember before um, with the grass, if you were to come in here and all we had was the six different grass types and you were to try to apply one of these. So if you were to go in here and say we wanted to apply this long grass right here, what you would end up doing inevitably is you would come in here and you would have like a 10 foot circle or a 5 foot circle and you'd kind of try to paint in here and then you could see what this does is this grass just kind of like jumps the edges right so you can see how when this gets applied this jumps the edges so that it's outside of here giving you this really irregular overgrown look which especially if you didn't have these isolated really starts getting weird with your um, with your tile here and things like that. However, now instead of doing that, what we can do is use these border grass materials. And what the border grass materials are going to do is they actually kind of stay inside the lines. So if I go in here and for example, I use the lawn one borders, I just drop this in here and I use the paint tool. Well, now if I paint across here like this, you can see how that grass stays inside the lines and inside the borders. And so what that does for us is that allows us to quickly fill in spaces like these without having to worry about the grass kind of overlapping or going outside of the line. So this is a great new feature. Um, so really helpful, really makes this a lot easier. And especially when you couple it with applying um, one of the grass or landscape materials behind this. So right now, for example, this grass doesn't match the background. So so it doesn't look very good. But if you come in here to your materials and you find a ground material under nature, like this grass one, what this does is this really kind of fills this in in the background and now your grass looks a lot more realistic because you can't necessarily see those gaps quite as much. So this is a really great new feature um, that really makes everything a lot easier when trying to apply grass in your model. And if you wanted to, you could even zoom way out and with your grass material, or sorry, with your grass models, you could just bring this lawn borders in, turn your diameter way up for your circle. We'll put this maybe on 100 feet. And you could just paint this whole thing in. 
So and then once you've applied your materials, then you can go back in and just right click on this again and you can just uh, re-click on the isolate or exit isolation and you can see how you can unhide your model like this. So leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. What do you think about the new grass materials? What do you think about the new border edges features? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.